you have failed to catch up on this show. But that's why you're here, so let's get started, here on Comic Universe. What's up guys, and welcome to the web's first must-see comic and nerd culture show, welcome to the comic universe. I'm Jay, I've got a PhD in nerd culture, and I should know, I printed it out myself. And welcome back to another edition of, and that's what you missed, this time it's for Arrow, season 7. The second to last season of Arrow. That's right folks, we are at an end of an era. Next week begins the final season of the Arrow vs. Flagship show. You know, say what you want about Arrow, but it will always have a special place in my heart because that was legit the first ever TV show period that I started reviewing regularly on my channel. And that's what started me down the path of reviewing TV shows. It's just my regular thing for my channel and it's really helped me out. So of course, I will always have mad love for Arrow, even though I will acknowledge it had some major pitfalls just overall. You know, I still love it. And, you know, I'm going to ride with it till the end. Now, I realize a lot of you guys, especially with Arrow, jumped ship probably around Season 3, Season 4 territory. Because that was when it really dipped. You know, it had that huge dip in quality. And then started to come back around, like, Season 6, I feel like, was when it really started to pick up back again. And that's when I started to cover it again. Because I feel like I skipped most of Season 5. Because <laughs> um, I stopped reviewing it for a time after a point in season four where they killed you know Laurel Lance and then I came back and started reviewing it in season six and season six was actually pretty solid I really liked Diaz as a villain and so I continued uh, from six onward all the way through seven uh, but that's why I am here to do a That's What You Missed for Arrow Season 7. Now, as I explained before with the Flash video, which I will leave annotated in a card up here, as well as in the end card at the end of the video, this is a recap series that I came up with my good buddy Brian, who is also assisting me with this series as well, kind of based off of the, you know, recap catchphrase from Glee, and that's what you missed on Glee. And so we are going to be, like, broadly covering some of the major events of the season so i am here to assume that you have caught up or at least have a cursory knowledge of arrow seasons one through five i'll talk a little bit about stuff from season six to kind of you know refresh your memory but let's hope you at least know a majority or at least you know a good chunk of stuff from seasons one through five and i didn't actually say it in my flash one so i apologize for that but you know spoilers ahead obviously so let's go ahead and talk about this season so six firmly establishes diaz aka richard dragon as like the big boss um the huge threat the one that is you know, coming after Oliver and his family. Oliver is officially out as the Green Arrow. And now, you know, he got imprisoned. He got sent to Slapside. And we basically get a version of, like, Green Arrow Supermax. The, you know, in development hell, you know, never to be seen, you know, pilot movie that was like pitched around for like so many years we finally get to see that put in action here you know green is the new black so to speak where basically ollie gets thrown into jail with a lot of the villains he put away and now they know his identity so they're like going directly after him so it's kind of like an oz situation so a good chunk of season seven has to do with Ollie being in jail and kind of that whole scenario and how he deals with his villains, how he tries to keep his head down, you know, serve his sentence and not try to escape. But of course, you know, this is Arrow. They can't have the main character be in jail the whole time. So he's going to have to break out at some point. However, 
The reason why I like this much better than The Flash, when The Flash tried to do this, was it actually makes sense for the story to have Oliver be in jail. Because Oliver, you know, spent like a season and a half murdering people. He killed several people, so, you know, he does actually deserve to serve some time. So it made way more sense to have him in jail, and it had more weight to it to put him in jail and his identity was out and everything so like it you know made everything have a lot more stakes now meanwhile you know as part of the deal the rest of team arrow can no longer be you know vigilantes and so you know renee kind of is you know battling with the itch to get back into the hero game to help you know save his neighborhood and dinah who is now the police captain is not gonna lie a little bit of a prick and resistant to get back into the game and she's fighting with Renee a lot because she just wants to keep her head down and you know uh, try to restore the faith in the police force for Star City different things like that and meanwhile Diaz still has a bunch of people in his pocket so that he's like manipulating things and like pushing things around to you know make situations where he can just completely screw with Oliver's life and continue to screw with Oliver's life and we also, instead of the classic Arrow flashback format, we have flash forwards where we get to experience a story centered around future William and um, his, like, discovery of, you know, what's happened to everyone now. And in this flash forward, Star City has become kind of like this Terminator-esque type backdrop and they're dealing with this essentially Skynet, which we eventually see throughout the course of the present day stuff, is something created by Helix, you know, Felicity's company, her and Curtis. And she develops this security system because obviously Felicity's paranoid because Oliver's not here to protect them. She has to find a way to step up and protect her family too. So she creates Archer, which is this system that eventually gets corrupted in the future to basically become Skynet. And we find that out in the future with Felicity going underground full on Sarah Connor style and helping out the resistance, which is, of course, the Canaries, which we get to see an older version of Renee's daughter, Zoe, as a Canary. And that is so awesome. I loved it. And we get to see Felicity and Oliver's daughter, Mia Smoke played by the lovely Catherine McNamara, and she is absolutely fantastic, and I cannot wait to see more of her in season eight. Uh, but this future uh, world is really interesting. We get to see a lot of it. We get to see Roy in the future, and kind of how he has been exiled, and, you know, kind of like, pushed aside a little bit because of something he did. We find out what he did and we find out that he was actually killed on his, you know, Lazarus Pit quest with Sia and Nyssa and they brought him back using a Lazarus Pit and so he suffers from the bloodlust of, uh, that comes from, you know, dipping in the Lazarus Pit, which we saw, of course, both Sarah and Thea deal with. Also, we get to see, you know, the redemption of Black Siren all throughout this season, which I really enjoyed. Um, you know, first it's, you know, her, you know, pretending to be the real Laurel and, you know, stepping into the role as a DA, and then her stepping into and embracing more of her vigilante side and becoming a true canary, leading to a badass team up with you know, her, Sarah, and, of course, Dinah, and it stops Dinah from being a prick, so that's great. I really enjoyed that. And again, Arrow's Season 7 really felt like a final season to me. It really does wrap up a lot of stuff with the characters, and they even have a lot of, like, finality in the finale of season seven because we have like Oliver and Felicity officially like going off the grid um you know to have the baby in secret so that you know no one can no one can track them down wow I just realized that I'm making a video called and that's what you missed and I was about to 
finish editing this when I skipped over two major things that happened in this season. So I guess you could say I missed something while making and that's what you missed. You know, the more you know. So the two things that I skipped that were pretty major were, you know, Ollie and Team Arrow throughout the season, you know, developed this deal to work alongside the Star City Police Force, you know, basically as sanctioned vigilantes. And, you know, that whole system crumbles because of what happens with Oliver's sister, who comes into the picture as the new Green Arrow while Oliver is in prison. And, you know, we discover that she has her own personal vendetta and that she's working for this, like, you know, super clandestine, like, you know, even, you know, higher tier assassins than the League called the Ninth Circle. And so she has this whole elaborate plan to take down Oliver, his, you know, legacy and his structure. Um, in order to basically get revenge and, you know, kind of spite him because he had the life that she always wanted. Now, in the end, Emiko ends up seeing the error of her ways and having an awesome team up with Oliver, which results in Oliver and the rest of Team Arrow saving the city, but having to part ways because, you know, the damage is still kind of irrefutable and now all vigilantism is outlawed in Star City, so OG Team Arrow has to split and bounce, which is why they are in the current state they're in in the future. So that makes a lot of sense. And it also explains why Renee, you know, decides to have that particular stance in the future when he is like the mayor of Star City, which I did not mention also in my recap portion of the video. So there's that as well. Uh, so yeah, you know, Emiko basically in her dying words apologizes to Oliver and says, you know, your family's gonna die. I made sure of it. You have to hide Felicity and the baby, which is why, like I said earlier, they have to go off the grid at the end to have the baby in secret because people are going to try and track her down. Those people, of course, being the Nine Circle, which leads into why Mia was trained by Felicity in a certain way and why she was raised the way she was when she comes into the scene, you know, later in the season. So I love how full circle this whole season is. And I loved, again, not just the callbacks, the original Arrow stuff, but also just, again, really kind of like understanding the roots of the show and playing with the themes that have always kind of been the foundation of it and uh, really just making a solid finish. And of course, this ends with Ollie going off with the monitor because like I said in my Flash video, you know, he makes a deal to trade his life for Barry and Kara's essentially. So we'll get to see how that goes next season. And that's what you missed. On So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of And That's What You Missed on Arrow Season 7 and I hope to see you guys on my main channel, Mr. J's Reviews, for my Arrow Season 8 reviews as well as Brian will be doing his own on his channel as well. And don't worry, Universe, you won't be missing out on Arrow content here if you just want to, you know, stick with this channel. We will definitely have a season recap when Arrow Season 8 is all done and in the books now obviously with this and that's what you missed episode i did not cover all the event of the season like you know the appearance of john diggle's stepdad general stewart played by ernie hudson which was pretty huge but you know if i had done all that this would have been a much longer video, so I just wanted to do like a broad strokes. The important stuff that I think will definitely come back later um, in next season. But if you want to discuss uh, more specific events in detail, definitely we can talk about it more in the comments down below 
as always, don't forget to let me know your thoughts and feels. I want to thank each and every one of you guys for supporting this series. It seems to be doing pretty well. I'm glad to see you guys uh, like the format. And uh, once again, a big thank you to Brian for helping me put this together. Um, you know, he did the Supergirl and Black Lightning one. And of course, you know, I'm doing Flash and Arrow because those are pretty much my staples uh, as well. So, I uh, really, really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And the next one I'll be doing tomorrow is for Riverdale. And boy, oh boy, that is going to be a fun one because I have no idea how the heck I'm going to explain all the crazy crap that happened in Riverdale this past season. But until then, I hope you guys will join me for that one. In the outro card, I will leave linked my Flash episode of And That's What You Missed for The Flash Season 5, as well as Brian's episode on Black Lightning Season 2. So, until next time, guys, this is Jay from Mr. Reviews for the comic universe. And like I always say, once a comic book geek, always a comic book geek. And once an Arrow fan, always an Arrow fan. And hopefully, I'll see you guys next time in the universe. Peace.